Welcome to the AP Physics video lecture. This is covering part three of the rotational kinematics. This, I'm just going to go actually over the kinematics part now, okay? So what I have on the slide here are the equations that you see in kinematics on the left hand, on the right hand side, you see the linear ones that we saw from the uh, chapter two. Notice that the acceleration is constant for, all, for any of the kinematics equations to work, all right? Their equivalent is the angular acceleration here. And notice, because acceleration has to be constant for linear world, our angular acceleration has to be constant for our circular world. Notice it's exactly the same. For the sake of this, if you look at blue, they say that the starting, look, the starting position is zero for the line world and the starting position for the angular world is zero, just to simplify this you can see it looks like this. A typical problem in chapter two would be something that looks like this, okay? An object travels on a horizontal surface from rest and then accelerates uh, at five meters per second squared uh, for three seconds. What is the object's velocity at the end? We saw that we can use just that equation. Velocity equals starting velocity plus acceleration times time. Plug in your acceleration, plug in your time, your starting velocity was zero because it says from rest, you got 50 meters per second, okay? You also might see something like this. If the new velocity is 30, uh, is what? It's 30 per, the units are wrong. If the new velocity is three meters per second in the last problem, um, given that the time is still three seconds and travels the same distance, what is the acceleration? Right. So again, it's the same approach, but this time the new velocity was 30. You want to know what is the acceleration, but the time here is three seconds. Right. So again, divide by three to both sides, you get a a here is 10. OK, this makes sense because the acceleration has to be um, faster because it because there's more velocity here. Right. Be given the same amount of time. Right. So this is like a typical problem from chapter two. I'm going to show you how it looks like in the circle world now. Okay. It looks like this. Rather than say an object travels on a horizontal surface, it says a disc rotates. Right. But it's both from rest. Now it's going to say it accelerates. Rather than say meters per second squared, it says five rads per second squared. Same time here. Now it's going to ask for the disc angular velocity at the end. So your approach is the same you're going to use the same equation, but in the circular world, which is going to be omega equals to omega naught plus acceleration angular times time. Plug in the same values, you get the same answer. The units are different, rads per second, all right? Likewise, you're gonna see this. And then, all right? Now, what happens if the new angular velocity is 30 rads per second, like in the last problem? and it still gives the same amount of time. What is the new angular uh, What and travels the same angular displacement? What is the angular acceleration? Again, same process. Grab the same equation, plug in the same values, divide by three. Notice this answer matches identically with this answer. The only difference is that the units are now rad per second and the symbols are different, but it describes the same thing. The kinematics equation for the line world and the angular world are essentially the same. So whatever solve method that you use when it comes to your kinematics equation, apply it the same way here. And this is a very typical um, angular kinematics equation um, that comes from the AP Physics 1 exam. Uh, this is my version of it. So a scenario is a point on a edge of a disc rotates around the center of the disc with an initial angular velocity of two rads per second clockwise. The graph here shows the point of the angular acceleration as a function of time. The positive direction, keyword here, positive direction is going to be considered to be counterclockwise. All frictional forces are considered to be negligible. You're gonna draw a graph representing the angular velocity um, omega of the point of the disc as a function of time between zero to four seconds. So this is the zero 
to four seconds here. Notice here, the acceleration here is going to be constant at five rad per second squared. So here, the slope here is going to be, has to be five rad per second squared, right? But it says now we just need to know where to start it. Do we start it from here? Do we start it from here? Or do we start it from here? What is the starting omega? So what is the starting omega? We know from our problem, it says it right here. The initial angular velocity is two rads per second clockwise. So that means it's negative two. Okay, because it's clockwise. Clockwise in this problem was negative. So we start here from the negative value, then we go up, whatever. So we have to make sure that the slope here is five rads per second squared. All right, next, it's now gonna ask you for the angular displacement of the point after 10 seconds. So notice, this should give you a hint, right? The angular acceleration here is constant. Once you know that angular acceleration is constant, you should draw automatically your kinematics equation, right? All right, and again, you want to look at what information you're given. We know that time is 10 seconds. You know that the starting angular display, the starting angular, um, it's not the starting angular, give me a second. Is that the wrong symbol? Yeah, I put the wrong symbol here, the starting angular velocity. So this should be this symbol, right? Is negative two rads per second, then the acceleration alpha is five rads per second squared. The only equation that you have here that gives you your question mark, which is angular displacement, which is this, would be um, either this one or this one, but you have time. Do you see how you have time? So this one has time. There's time here. So you're gonna end up using the second one, okay? All right, plug in your values, okay? The starting, your, your initial angular velocity was negative two, time 10, plug in all the values, get the answer, okay? It's basically a chug and plug at this point. You just have to make sure that you're extracting the information correctly and you're getting it from either the graph. Second thing, make sure you understand that the alpha is constant, therefore you should use your kinematics equations, right? But there you go. Uh, these are basically the kinematics um, understanding that you need for the AP Physics 1 exam when it comes to um, the rotation and the um, rotation kinematics.